What's up guys, in this video I'm going to talk about stepper motors. They come in various shapes and sizes, they can be controlled in different ways. They're cheap, powerful, readily available and they are great for robot and CNC projects. Let's get started. Stepper motors come in three main flavours. Permanent magnet stepper motors. Variable reluctance stepper motors. And hybrid synchronous stepper motors. And they all have one thing in common, they move in steps. Unlike a traditional DC motor that runs while voltage is applied, stepper motors move in discrete steps. To try and illustrate how they work, I have lots of graphics. And I'll take a hybrid synchronous stepper motor apart so we can see how it's actually made. <coughs> I'll even run it half assembled, show the effect of running it at different current values and how much force it can produce, and more. Let's look at a permanent magnet stepper motor first. In this cross-section view, we have a stator with two coils connected in series. We'll call these coils phase A. If we apply a voltage to phase A with the positive potential on connection A1, then we'll create a magnetic field. If we reverse the voltage applied, we create an opposite magnetic field. Now let's add some more phases, phase B, phase C and phase D. Altogether we have four phases. To keep things clear, I'm going to omit these connections because they are just in the way. Now let's look at our rotor. We have a permanent magnet. In order to get the rotor to move, we are going to energize the phases in turn. If we now energize phase A, the rotor will turn to align with the axis of phase A because opposite magnetic poles attract each other. By doing this we can see the motor has moved 45 degrees. For this motor one step is 45 degrees. And now while we continue to apply power to phase A the rotor remains in position. If we turn off phase A and energize phase B the rotor again moves 45 degrees. We can do this again with phase C and with phase D. In order to continue to rotate, we need to energise phase A in reverse polarity. And again, we can do the same for phase B, C and D. Altogether, it takes 8 steps to complete one rotation. If we wanted to run the motor the opposite way, we simply perform the steps in reverse. So if we stopped here on step 5 and energised phase D with positive on D1, the rotor would turn one step counterclockwise. We can improve this by energizing two phases at once and drive the stepper in full step mode. In this mode, the motor will be able to produce its full rated torque. To do this, we start by energizing phase A and B with positive potential on A1 and B1. Now notice that the rotor aligns with the axis centred between the two phases. For each step we still only turn off one phase and turn on one phase. Phase B remains energised and now we energise phase C. Notice that the rotor has still turned 45 degrees for one step. We have not gained or lost any resolution but we have gained motive power as the combined magnetic fields of two phases is stronger. Now we just turn each successive phase on in turn exactly like we did for wave mode and our permanent magnet stepper motor works in full step mode. But there's one key piece of information missing. For each of the last examples I told you where the stepper motor would start but in reality these motors have no feedback so how do we know where they are? Well, we need to count the steps from a known location because the stepper motor doesn't have an encoder or anything to let us know where it is. There's no feedback at all. That's why on most 3D printers you will see these end stop switches. And before you can print anything, you first need to home the printer. But that's not to say there aren't limitations. If our motor was to get stuck against a heavy load, we might skip some steps. This is where the controller has tried to move the stepper motor and counter the steps, but the motor itself hasn't actually moved. So now, we don't know where it is. Okay. 
and the only way to recover from this would be to drive it back to a known location. Variable reluctance stepper motors work in much the same way as permanent magnet stepper motors, except the rotor is an iron core. It still moves with the magnetic fields produced by each of the phases because the magnetic field will pull the rotor to the location with the smallest gap and lowest reluctance. In this particular example, the stator again has four phases and the rotor has six teeth. If we take one step forward by energizing phase A, we can see that the rotor moves 15 degrees. Looking at the graph, we can see that A2, B2, C2 and D2 are all always connected to the low potential. Because the rotor is not polarized, the magnetic field generated by the phases can be in either orientation. If we connected A2, B2, C2 and D2 together, and then to the low potential, we can consider this to be a unipolar motor, where only one phase is energized at a time and the phase polarity always remains the same. We can see that only four steps are required in sequence to drive the motor and 24 steps are required for one revolution. Notice that when we step the field in a clockwise direction, as before, the rotor turns in a counterclockwise direction. Now, for a hybrid synchronous stepper motor, this is a hybrid of the previous two. The rotor has the teeth of the variable reluctance motor and a permanent magnet. The rotor might look a little confusing as it's just one big north pole. I'll take a motor apart and explain it more in a moment. This time we only have two phases, and each phase has four coils, connected in series. This is phase A. Notice that the coils alternate which direction they are wound. This one is wound from outside to inside, and this one from inside to outside, and so on. This makes more sense when we look at the phase in an energized state. We can see that it produces four alternating magnetic poles, north, south, north, south. And if we change the polarity of our applied potential, like the other motors, the magnetic poles change. Here is phase B, and here are the two phases together. Let's disassemble a hybrid synchronous motor and try to understand what is going on here. This is the rotor. For this motor it is made of four sections, called rotor cups. Inside this rotor, there are two permanent magnets. A shorter motor might only have two sections and a single magnet. The rotor cups are made of laminated silicon steel. You can see the individual layers if you look closely. Each section has a different magnetic field, for example, north, south, north, south. For this motor, the rotors have 50 teeth each and from one section to the next, the teeth are staggered. We can consider this to be lots of miniature magnetic poles. Looking at the stator, we can see it is also made of silicon steel laminations, and each pole also has teeth. Removing the base of the motor, there is a plastic insulator to prevent the circuit connections from shorting to the body of the motor. And here we have the connections to our phases from a plug on the outside of the motor. Notice there are six pins, but only four actual connections. This board is likely used in other motor configurations. These would be our phase A connections, and these would be our phase B connections. Now let's half assemble this and compare it to our diagram. If we zoom in, we can see how the teeth of the rotor compare to the teeth of the stator. Let's assume that both phases are energized with positive potential from A1 and B1. We can see that the top rotor cup teeth are out of alignment with the north poles generated in the stator by our phases. Looking at the south poles generated in the stator, we can see the teeth are aligned, much like our variable reluctance stepper motor. 
let's step the motor forward and see what happens. The rotor has moved 1.8 degrees, one step. But the rotor has 50 teeth, so how have we only moved 1 200th of a revolution? Notice that the stator has 6 teeth per pole and 8 poles for a total of 48 teeth. But there are gaps between the poles. This misalignment of the teeth between the rotor and stator contributes to the high resolution of the motor. It takes 4 steps to move one complete tooth. To turn the rotor one turn, we need to repeat these 4 steps 50 times, once for each tooth. Hybrid synchronous stepper motors have greater torque than other stepper motors and they typically have shorter step angles. Now we can see this with a half assembled motor. Here I am stepping the motor forward one step at a time and we can see the motor mimicking our diagram. The circuitry to control this is quite simple. There are lots of cheap stepper motor drivers available. In this case I am using a DRV8825 stepper driver and an Arduino Nano. The driver takes care of all the hard work. We simply tell it which direction to go with this pin and when we turn this pin on it will move one step. The motor is connected here to these four pins. And these pins are the power for the motor. The Arduino has to take care to count all the steps as we make them so we can know where the stepper motor is relative to where we started. I have four buttons. This button steps forward one step, this button steps backwards one step, and these two buttons are the same but 50 steps. The code for this is available via a link in the description. This small potentiometer on the driver is what controls how much current the driver will let flow through our stepper motor phases. Let's see how powerful our stepper motor is at different current values. Here I have the motor mounted to my bench and a 3D printed arm attached to the output shaft. I can control the motor using the buttons as before. The distance from the centre of the output shaft to this point is 100mm. By placing some scales underneath and stepping the motor forward, we can see how much force it generates. Every 100 grams of force at this distance is 0.1 newton meters of torque. Here it is at 0.2 amps per phase, 0.4 amps per phase, 0.6 amps per phase. 0.8 amps per phase and 1 amp per phase. 0.6 newton meters is quite impressive. These motors are rated at 0.7 newton meters with a current of 1.5 amps per phase. You may have noticed earlier that when we move the motor fast, we can hear a sound that correlates with the frequency of the steps taken. So this got me thinking can I play a song on a stepper motor? That actually sounds pretty decent, and because it's actually stepping precise amounts, the Arduino always knows exactly how many steps it is away from where it started. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you will like this video or this video. Thanks for watching.